It's been called the world's biggest and most impactful youth leadership summit. I'm so happy I'm here right now. Uh, just the energy of young people from every corner of the world uh, who are doing incredible work in their communities. I think it's really great to be part of this community. One Young World provides an opportunity for attendees to connect, confront and do something about the biggest challenges facing humanity. I think that this place is more of like a boiling pot for ideas, but it also acts as a space to catalyze collaboration. I feel like it's a place where I can draw strength from and give strength to. In 2022, the One Young World Summit was held in Manchester, UK. I attended and had the privilege of speaking with five promising leaders of tomorrow. Esther, thank you so much for joining me here. Tell me about the work that the Bluevard Initiative does. Bluevard Education Initiative, it's a non-profit redefining education from what it is to what it should be. So we basically answer the question, what does it mean for somebody to be educated? So is it, does it mean you have a degree? Does it mean going to university? Or is there something more? and we try to fill that gap. So we are the in between the school system and the workplace. So we go to the workplace and ask employers, what are the skills you're looking for? And we take those skills, design curriculums, and we go to rural communities and we train young people, sometimes out of school, sometimes in school, um, on those skills. So skills like project management, skills like communications, collaboration, teamwork, problem solving skills, networking, um, these are vital skills, regardless of the sector these young people may want to work into, um, they need. And we try to train them in a context-based curriculum. Shaksana, it's lovely to meet you here at the One Young World Summit. You co-founded Platform Africa. Tell me about that. So I co-founded an organization called Platform Africa. And for me, the motivation behind that is that I wanted to play a role in rewriting my narrative, but also the narrative of thousands and millions of refugees in Uganda uh, who are in Uganda right now, but they have experienced this situation before. Um, personally, my parents were displaced by the first civil war in South Sudan that lasted over 21 years. Uh, I ended up being born in the refugee camp. We returned back to South Sudan in 2006-05 when there was a peace agreement called the Comprehensive Peace Agreement that was signed. In 2011, the world knew that we got our independence and our country, South Sudan, was born. So it was a lot of optimism, a lot of hope. Unfortunately, two years later, the country went back into conflict. So for a person like me who has been born in the refugee camp, I ended up returning to the refugee camp. I tell people that the first time I was in the refugee camp, I was a child. I had no idea that, you know, I had no access to education. I had no hopes and dreams. Uh, but when I came back the second time, I saw the shift of how the first day I had a home and the next I didn't have anything. And for me, I wanted to create a platform to be able to rewrite that narrative. Nial, it's lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. You grew up in a refugee camp, the Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya. Yes. Tell me about some of your experiences there. Um, you know, I got to the camp when I was age 11 and I fled an arm attack on my village in Ethiopia where I grew up. But for me, the turning point was going to school. So I was so happy when I was able to go back to school in the camp and it was a service place where, where I could find healing, solace and hope and where I could, you know, think about a glowing future again. So I grew up listening to our radio with my dad and every single uh, day after school I would, you know, listen to the stories of other kids. So just listening to their stories and realizing the, the barriers they face in their communities you know, the challenges they witness while fleeing their countries, the brutal images of war and violence they see that it still traumatized them. I thought of doing something. So I set up Refugee Peace Ambassadors when I was still in high school to create a space where young people in the camp would come together, you know, to share stories, to share experiences, uh, to our mentorship programming, to our peace building programming, and to just work together to find solutions for challenges facing them in the refugee camp. Uh, because they just so much experience that they have to design their own uh, you know, solution to the challenges they face in the camp. And that is how my community work started. So it was just a group of my classmates coming together to say, let's see what we can do to find, you know, solution to these barriers that we face in our community. 
Jamila, thank you so much for joining me here at One Young World. And what is your vision for Smart Girls Uganda? Oh, my vision for Smart Girls Uganda. First, I was thinking I'm going to stay in Uganda and make the impact I am scaling globally after the One Young World. My vision is to impact young women in male-dominated, non-traditional skill sets beyond Uganda. I'm going to expand to South Africa. I'm going to expand to Ghana. I'm going to expand to Guyana. Ooh, like I, I, I can see it because now I have connections to all the countries in the world because of One Young World. Enterprise for Peace has gotten me here. So my vision is to make sure we fight for gender equalities in these career sets of automotive mechanics, what a woman can do, what a man can do, a woman can do even much better. Daniela, what was it for you that made you become passionate about ocean sustainability and of course starting the Sustainable Ocean Alliance? My big moment was when I was 12 years old and I watched Al Gore's movie An Inconvenient Truth. And so I go home, watch this film, and it's all about climate change. And it was that moment when I realized as a kid that my future was at risk. It was that moment when I knew I would dedicate the rest of my life to trying to figure out what can I do to help our planet. And then I went to school, I learned about environmental science, I did everything you know, a young entrepreneur could do to just try to belong and find ways to have action. And ultimately at Georgetown University, I decided to bring these two worlds together, the world of policy and young people, and finding ways of also incorporating entrepreneurship to save our ocean. So that was my, my, uh, my catalytic moment was when I was um, 19 um, at, at Georgetown. Daniela, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, it's been a pleasure.